Okay, in this video, we are going to talk about uh, isothermal expansions and work done in an isothermal process. What is an isothermal process? Any process in which gas expands or maybe compresses and pressure changes, everything that can happen. But it should happen at a constant temperature. That's the word iso is same, thermal is temperature. So any process that happens at a same temperature is what we call as an isothermal process. So in this uh, case, we are going to evaluate what is the work done by a gas in an isothermal process. Let's get our in initial conditions. So you can see it has some initial volume. Let's call that as volume as V1. And this plate has some area. Well, that is area is A. And obviously the gas has some pressure here. We call that as pressure as P1. And let's say the entire process is going to take place at some temperature T. So maybe you're holding on to that piston or something. Imagine you release that piston so that gas is going to do some work on it. And so the gas is going to expand. This is something that we will see. Gas may expand a little bit. And so now you have a new volume. It comes over here. So you have a new volume. Volume V2. And the gas would have now a new pressure. So that pressure is P. And now comes the question, how do we evaluate the work done? And well, you will say that the work done equals force into displacement. But the thing is, this only works as long as force is a constant. But in our situation, since the gas is expanding, pressure is decreasing, so the force that is put by the gas on that piston is going to decrease as the gas is going to expand. Which means this equation does not work in our case. So what we have to do is we have to do an integral. <coughs> and the way we are going to do the integral is as follows. Since we want to evaluate from V1 to V2, we are going to consider some random case. Consider that the piston is at some random, uh, you know, the gas is at some random volume between V1 and V2. Let's just say that over here. So let's say this is some random volume V. And let's say that it has some random pressure P inside. And the temperature, of course, remains T. And what we're going to do is we're going to allow that gas to do an extremely small amount of work. Here's that. This increase in volume is extremely small. Let's say that this displacement that the gas gets, I call it as dx. And so the volume. Uh, that increase that happens is so small that over the entire volume I can almost assume that the pressure is a constant. Okay, <clears throat> so what is that small work done by the gas? Well, the small work done by the gas, dW, is going to be the force that the gas is putting on the piston multiplied by the displacement cost. But in, in terms of gases, we usually avoid forces and we like to talk in terms of pressures. And so we can do that because pressure P is defined as the force over the area. And so I can always write force is the pressure into the area. Here it is. Pressure times area dx. And this term now, A into dx, is nothing but this, this volume. Which we can now call as dV. So this is a small work done. This is in joules small work done by the gas and so now to evaluate the complete work done by the gas I have to do an integral and so that integral will be some from that initial volume V1 I think it was somewhere over here to the final volume V2 maybe I think it comes somewhere over there of dW and so it's going to be the integral V1 V2 P dV so this is a general expression to calculate work done for a gas in any process. Depending upon different processes, uh, the further steps will change. Since we are considering a simple isothermal process, our integrals are going to be extremely simple. We know the ideal gas equation, PV equals nRT, and therefore I can substitute for P as nRT divided by V, and I can plug in it over here. So the total work done by our gas 
going from v1 to v2 is going to be n rt by v dv all the constant terms can be taken out remember temperature is a constant so it comes out of the integral v dv over v and this integral has a standard result it's going to be the log to the base e of v from the initial volume to final volume and that will give you log base e v2 over v1 don't worry much about how this integral gives you log that's that's maths and of course you can always convert this into base 10 3.3 nrt log to the base I'm sorry, 10 from v2 over v1 that is the expression the work done by a gas in an isothermal process let's try to make some sense of this you can see that if v2 is greater than v1 I'll write that over here then w is going to be positive does that make sense? of course because if v2 is greater than v1 then the gas is the one who is doing the work and expansion is taking place and that by convention is positive and clearly you see if v2 is less than v1 then our log is going to give us a negative value and so our work done will be negative which means uh, it's a compression that is taking place so it makes perfect sense also notice that there is a t over here that tells you that if you can if you do work on a gas let's say you you expand the gas from let's say one liter to two liters of volume you do it at a lower temperature you end up doing less amount of work if you do it at a higher temperature you end up doing more amount of work and of course if there are more number of moles of gas inside if you do the same work for maybe if, if, if you do the same thing for maybe 10 or 15 moles instead of one mole of gas of course you have to do 10 or 15 times more work because there are so many molecules inside it the pressure will be tremendously high okay